Right, afternoon everyone. Uh, Colin Scott for the Board of Taxidermy. Just going to do a short presentation on how to take a cape of a deer for taxidermy purposes. Um, just a few, a few pointers uh, of things, things not to do. Um, if it's been shot in the, the Lands Heart area, and if it's and if it's grolicked, you shouldn't need to bleed it. That should be sufficient for um, sufficient bleeding for for food purposes. The worst thing you can do is sort of rush forward with your knife and make a cut down the front. Because that's that's basically going to going to ruin the cape. <coughs> if you feel you're compelled that you have to bleed it from the throat for whatever reason. Just make a small, a small cut in here and move the knife around until you find the, the jugular. But don't, especially don't make a cut across the way, that's even worse because you're going to cut the hair and I can't, I can't hide that at all. Okay, so if it's a big animal, <coughs> don't drag it as well. Um, or if you're tying a rope around its neck, if it's a red deer, Wrap your coat around it first or something, because the hair can be damaged and uh, it can't be reversed. So, um, some other things to remember is you want to get the skin or the deer to the taxidermist as soon as practical. Uh, it'll be okay in a, in a cold store for sort of three days without any problems. Um, I've had them up to six days, seven days, and they've still been okay, but others that haven't been okay, so really, um, you don't want them in the cold store too long. Uh, another thing to remember is, I can't really have too much skin. I can always trim some off, but I can't add it on. Um, so just for the... You don't have to cut your deer in half first, by the way, this is just for demonstration. So I really want to make a first cut behind the shoulder blades, right round the body, meet at the other side, and then the second cut is round the tops of the legs. And that's you don't have to be particular because you're taking more skin than, than you need. If you want a pedestal mount like the the one shown at the stand there, you maybe want to give me a bit more back to about halfway along the, the body. If you've got the deer back home, it's probably easier if you actually just cut the legs off because you're not going to be you know, using, using much of the, the legs for meat. So just cut them off and then start pulling the, the skin forward. If you're out in the field and you want to do this, cut, cut the legs off, don't worry. Just make a cut from, just take these pins out so you can see the direction the cut's going. Just from the top of the leg, back to your first incision, just do a straight line, just get the knife under the skin, cut it back. Same at the other side. So just start easing the skin forward. It'll come away quite, if you've experienced it skinning, you'll know it'll it come away quite easy. Just keep pulling it forward, making cuts where you have to. If you've got somebody to hold, hold it all the better. Just working the skin forward like that. And if you've cut the front legs off, when you pull the skin forward, the front legs will point towards the head and you can slip the skin over the stumps quite easily. Just carry on skinning. It gets a bit tougher when you get to here. You've got to keep making cuts but um, don't worry about leaving flesh on the on the skin. I can trim that off after. So just keep cutting it and pulling down as you go. It'll start to get difficult about here but don't worry. You don't have to take it all the way to the top. At this stage, you can just get a saw 
cuts through the neck, and then he can put, unless it's a red deer or something, he can put the, he can put that in the freezer if he can't get it to you know the taxidermist fairly soon. Um, it is also to help you if you need to do it. You can make a you can make another incision from the back of the head. Just cut right down down the middle, middle of the back. You come to your original cut there, and that will that will open up the cape and make it a bit easier to skin the neck. But don't worry about doing that. Uh, you should manage to, to tube skin it far enough down to um, far enough down the neck to cut off there. I don't mind um, if some, if you're not confident enough to do that. I don't mind somebody bringing the, the whole deer to my workshop and I'll take the cape off for them, it's no, no problem. Um, so has anyone got any, any questions at all? So when you talk about bringing the, the cape back over its head, yes. is that how you want to freeze it? Or is it the hair is all inside or that? Um, right, okay. But <coughs> yeah, once, you, once you've cut the, cut the neck off, um, ju just turn it back. Turn it back the normal way. In fact, if you've got a bit of neck in there and it's frozen, if um, if you're having to send that by carrier to the taxidermist, that sort of bl block of frozen f flesh keeps the, the skin nice and cool when it's in transit. So. Um, is frozen back when shaking the Um, frozen, yeah. Just just freeze it because. The salt can only penetrate from the from the inside of the skin. So, if you've only taken it down to there, there's there's um, it's not it's not going to work in the face. So, I mean, you can't practice skinning the whole thing, but it's it's tricky to not to make cuts in the face. It's tricky around the ears, around the backs of the eyes, and in the scent gland, not not to make cuts. Um, so you would better leave that to the taxidermist, really. <coughs> it will look better when it's finished. <laughs> right, this is this skin's been this skin's been tanned um, and thinned down a bit. I'll thin it down a bit more, and uh, it's it's this one's just going to be a shoulder mount. But it was easier to show you on the, on the front end of the deer. Do I see? Do you tan the hides as well? Or? Oh yes, I tan tan the skin, tan the hides. Yeah, yeah. I mean the <coughs> from the stage you would bring it to me. Once it was defrosted, I would take a lot of measurements um, before I take the skin off, and um, then after it skinned it, I turn the ears outside in, split the lips around the eyes and then it gets salted um, and then after it's been salted it gets pickled in a salt acid solution and that sort of plumps up, swells the skin slightly allowing easier to what we call fleshing where we thin the skin down um, and then after we've done that it's, um, the skin's neutralised to you know, neutralise the acid in the skin, otherwise the skin will fall to pieces in, in time. Uh, then after it's been neutralised, it's been it's tanned, and then after it's tanned, it's oiled. So it, it's you quite. If I was mounting the whole skin, I would do the whole skin. Yes, I have. Yeah, take the bones out the hooves and, and that sort of thing. It's been a bit extra work there. Um, <clears throat> uh, something else that you might not know is if you've got a nice set of antlers and for whatever reason you haven't got the cape to go with it or if it was neck shot and the cape's no good you can always uh, get another cape and mount that onto your, your set of antlers that you want to show off so it, it's 
it's not a problem. Um, you might have to take your chance and get your get your role when it's changing coat from from winter to summer. The, the look up a bit patchy and not very nice. So take your chance and then get another cape later on in the season. Or I can supply the capes if, uh, if it's a problem. Um, How long does it take to complete that? How long does it take to complete that? Um, well, the tanning process takes about a week to get it like that um, and then it take about um, a day and a half to, to make the, the form and mount it up and then it's to dry out slowly uh, and then you've got to finish the, the colours around the, the eyes and so on, the tassels to go back in, colour in the inside of the ears um, so it's, it's it's done over, done in different stages over a period of a few weeks. Has, has much changed historically in, in, in the taxidermy regarding chemicals and um, such like it? Yeah, it's... it's is it better than that? I think so, yeah. Um, well, it's more sort of... More, te more technical a bit now for the tanning. There's there's lots of different ways to tan things. Um, the, the sort of traditional way, I suppose, was salt alum. People used salt alum, but um, it's there's better things in the market now uh, and better oils. The um, after the skin's been tanned, the sort of pores are open and receptive to put on the oil hot, well warm, and it soaks back into the skin. And if you wanted to make your skin soft, you would need to work it afterwards, but it's the oil that, that um, helps with that. But, I mean, there's, there's books on the subject of Tani, and I couldn't really explain it, everything, you know, in, in a few minutes. Um, but it's important it is tanned and not just, some people just use dry preservative like borax or rubbing salt and alum into the skin which doesn't it doesn't stabilize the skin and, and, uh, the borax will keep insects away um, and dry the skin up but it's not a stable skin so uh, always turn the skins okay anything else no ah uh, just just a little a little finishing to do <laughs> I'll stick the tusks in. <laughs> well, we'll never know the back end's missing. <laughs> um, I, I boil the skulls up, yeah, to clean the. Oh, the forums. Um, I make some and buy others. Um, yeah, so, yeah. If I'm not, if it's a one-off, it's not practical to to make it yourself. If there's a form available, even the commercial forms that you buy, um, as I said at the beginning, they take a lot of measurements, and they're, they're all a little bit different. So you'd be very lucky if you get one that, that fits. You've usually got to do a little bit of alteration. Um, that's quite popular, yeah. Yeah, uh, especially deer heads seem to be in fashion. Deer antlers as well. You can, there's even deer wallpaper going around now. <laughs> okay, all right, thank you.